Hello YouTube, this is Chuck. There's actually two ospreys flying around up there. I don't know if you can see them on camera. They were right together a minute ago. There you go. You might be able to see that one. They're flying over our lake over here trying to find themselves a fish. Oh, look at that one. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. We get him. Boom. I think I got him. Did he get anything? I don't think so. Now he's flying away, but you caught him diving into the thing. That's pretty cool. Anyway, Oh, now he's coming right up close to us. There you go. There, yeah, it's almost like he's posing for us. That's a good thing. Let me get turned around where I can talk to you. That was pretty cool. Well, I just made a, a little bit ago, I made a video and a firefighter story video about being a fire chief and budget woes and that kind of thing. And So I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. I think I'm going to do another one and talk about some uh, some contacts I've had with their Sasquatch friends. And uh, these are kind of surprising because they're in places you wouldn't think that they would be. And so my story is, uh, you know, the when the COVID thing broke, we actually were on a travel trailer trip and we were actually in at a travel trailer rally in Las Vegas. And, uh, and we're right downtown, not too far from McCarran Airport, noisy place, airplanes landing over about every 20 seconds, airplane flying over your head. But anyway, uh, we, uh, we were there when the whole thing broke on COVID. So we were planning on staying out for a little bit longer on the trip, but we cut our trip short. We came home and we huddled down most of the, most of the summer of 2020, like everybody else. And we, uh, we just hid out because you know nobody knew what was going to happen with COVID. So, but by the end of this, by the end of the year, we were getting pretty restless. And by that time, we knew that uh, RVing was actually a pretty good way to social distance because you could stay away from everybody and still go see stuff. And so we decided to uh, that we we're going to make a a winter trip to uh, Lake Havasu City. And uh, there's a Lake Havasu State Park is right in right in the town of Lake Havasu City and right on the beach and it's a pretty little place and so we went over there for Christmas and you know and of course the Lake Havasu City is the home of London Bridge and they doll the place up pretty nice for Christmas and they have what they call English Village there and and they go all out for that so that was something you know you got to go over there once to see it and, and we did that and so when uh after we were there for a few days, we went back down a little bit further south to another state park. It's called River Island State Park. And I've talked about River Island before. But uh, we checked in for uh, for New Year's at River Island. And so we were down there for, I think, four nights, I believe. And the first night I was there, surprisingly enough, I, I got the high we're here tingle. And I've talked about that before. And... Uh, I responded back to it, and uh, and I had one that was uh, that was talking to me. I asked him what his name was, and uh, and he told me his name w was Bizart. But when I said that back, uh, he kept telling me he they they don't say no very often, but he kept telling me over and over again what his name was. And what I finally figured out what was happening was I was pronouncing it wrong, and uh, the emphasis is actually on the second syllable, so that his name was actually Bizart. And, uh, and I was saying it wrong. And, and he probably told me probably 10 times before I finally got it right and figured out what was happening. And Well, Bizarre was a male, and he told me he was 34 years old. And, and I told him I was really, really surprised that there were that many of them uh, there because that's not, you know, that's not timber country. That's not mountains. That's, that's uh, right on the Colorado River. And it's, it's, there's, there's mountains there, but there's no trees to speak of, just a little bit along the river itself. And not the place you'd think they would be, and but I asked him if they, you know, if he had a, if there was very many of them there, and they said they had a pretty large group, and well, I, I talked to Bazart uh, that evening a little bit, and uh, and then the next evening he was back, and and uh, the third evening I had a different one came in, and that one's name was Lutz, and Lutz was a, a young male. He told me he was 19. Well, I th I don't think Lutz had ever known. A human that he could talk to before because he kind of took a shine to me and he hung around the rest of the time that we were there and uh, so the I think it was the third night we were there we we're there four nights the third night we were there 
my wife came down with uh, some breathing congestion and she was having quite a difficult time breathing and of course my first thought went to oh crap it's COVID and so I was pretty stressed out by it and she was pretty stressed out by it and that's kind of a they're not a real good medical care over in that area and the closest place is Lake Havasu City which is about 35 miles away and uh, and I was real concerned that I was going to have to pack her up middle of the night and take her up to Lake Havasu City the emergency room because she was she was having difficulty breathing and you know she didn't want to she didn't want that to happen neither did I and so uh interestingly enough Lutz come in and he told me he said don't worry about it she's okay it's not a problem she's okay now how he knew that I have no idea but that's what he told me and then I think he put me to sleep because I slept pretty good that night and the next morning she actually was doing better and and she got a little bit better and we stayed there for one more day and uh so then we went back to then we went to, we loaded up and came back home and Lutz actually uh, rode a little bit about, about 10 miles or so he actually accompanied us and then it was kind of like hi i gotta go now and and he was gone and that was really really surprised me because that area is not where you'd think they would be well the next uh the next year 2021 uh, I've told you about our trips that we went on there. We went to Colorado, and then we went up on the big trip up through Montana and Idaho and and had contact up there, and then went to southern New Mexico, and I made a, a video about a couple of those. But we also decided at Christmas time we'd go back to Lake Havasu State Park. And uh, if you ever decide to stay there, you better get a, re a reservation pretty early because that place is hard to get into, and we did that. And This time we actually had a beachfront space it was really really great and uh so we uh we were there for five days and and uh about the i think it was the third day i was there or something like that uh, i'm sitting out in the evening sitting on the beach and the sun had just gone down it was a pretty evening and once again i got the high we're here tingle now this state park's right in the middle of town and there's thirty-five thousand people there but i got the high we're here tingle i responded back to it and once again, I got the surprise that somebody knew that there was actually somebody there that knew they were there. And that one, uh, I talked to him, and his name was Lista. And he was an adult male. He told me he was 56. And, and I had a nice talk with him, a longer talk than we usually do. You usually only get about 10 minutes out of him before they leave. But he hung around for probably 20, 30 minutes. And tell him, I said, well, you've lived here all your life. You've really seen this place grow up. And and he was telling me, yeah, he said, there are a lot more people here now than there used to be, and that they really enjoy watching the people and all the annex and all the silly things people do, and that was, that's their entertainment, and they learn a lot from us. And I mean, he was talking to me just like he was one of the guys, and I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought it was really surprising for something right in town. Well, now, let's fast forward again to this year. Well, this year, those of you that watch my channel know that... Uh, Back in February, I had a, a friend pass away, and, and so we made a flying trip over to Santa Barbara to go to his memorial service. And that was mid-February. Well, the end of February, we had a travel trailer rally over in Quartzsite, Arizona. And Quartzsite's not on the river. It's about 15 miles inland, but Quartzsite's an RV mecca, and, and there's acres and acres and acres of gravel flats out there where you can put thousands of RVs, and everybody's boondocking, and and, uh, and there's people spend the whole winter over there. And, and, and uh, everybody's heard about Quartzsite if you're an RVer at all. Well, we like to go over there every year. And we had a travel trailer rally planned there for the end of February. Well, we had a gap in between the travel trailer rally and the, or between the memorial service and the travel trailer rally. So instead of driving all the way home and driving all the way back, uh, we just went out there and we boondocked for 11 nights. And the last three were the rally, but we were there for about a week. And and I'll be darned, we, about halfway through that time, uh, one night we were, we were there, we were boondocking. There was a, a group of the people that were going to go to the rally that got there early. There was five or six of us there at the spot where the rally was going to be. And and I'm sitting out in the evening, and, and once again, I get the high we're here tingle. So I responded back to it, and... Uh, and that was a, a, I believe it was probably a young adult. He might have been a teenager, but his name was Dean. And Dean was really surprised that somebody knew they were there. And and uh, and so you know the the typical thing. And and 
So I talked to him for a little bit, and then he was gone. And a couple hours later, uh, Dean was back. And this time he had a group with him, and including an elder. And the elder told me his name was Surnan. And, uh, and I asked him how old he was, and, and uh, I believe, I'm not 100% certain, but I think, I, I think he told me he was 94. Uh, he told me how old he was, but I'm not 100% certain that number's right. But, uh, but you could tell he was an el elder just by the way he, he would communicate. And of course, all the communication we're talking about is mind speak. And uh, so he, it's like he came to confirm that, yes, somebody was here that actually knew they were there and, and actually was able to communicate with them. And then, uh, and then after, uh, after he left, then there was a, another a male that, that stayed around and talked to me for a little bit. And I had his name on the tip of my tongue here up until just now, and I can't remember what it is now. But, uh, but he stayed around and talked for a little bit. And, uh, and they, they live in the mountains, not too far away, but Quartzite's in a big, broad valley. And, uh, and so they, they, they come down the valley and wander around and watch the people like, all, like they do everywhere. But I was really surprised to find them at Quartzite because I'd been to Quartzite multiple times. And I did at one point to have uh, occasion to have a little conversation with one named Parley. And that was uh, several years ago. And, and uh, that was before I even was, they even would talk to me like they do now. But, uh, but they live most everywhere. They've been in the desert and I found them in the desert and a couple other places as well. And we're getting some people coming in here now. so. Uh, I'm probably going to wrap this one up. It's probably long enough. Uh, as I told you before, we're over at the park. It's a nice day. It's on Saturday. And uh, there's some people walking dogs here and looking at the birds. I don't see. I'm looking around. I don't see the ospreys right at this second. So uh, I'll spin you around. I'll show you over. You probably can't see it. But if you look in the middle of the screen, on the other side of the lake, there's a white car. And there's a group of people on the other side of that. And there's going to be a musical event here up at the north part of the park this evening. And I think they're over there rehearsing. I think that's what there's, what's over there. But uh, show you around. It's a beautiful afternoon. So I'll tell you, as I always do, take care of each other, love each other. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I'll be back with another one here pretty quick. We'll see if this one is good enough to load or not. And so right now, I'll tell you, peace out.